Hi, this is Justin Coletti of Sonic Scoop, and today, thanks to Reftone, I get to talk about one of my favorite speaker designs in history. And if you're listening to this right now, there is an 80 or maybe 90% chance that you should own a set of speakers like these if you don't already. On the bottom, you see my original Oritone Super Sound Cubes. These were probably made in the 1970s or maybe early 1980s. And in their heyday, they were found in studios and recording trucks the world over. And some of the best sounding records, in my opinion, in history were mixed on Oritones. One of the most commonly referenced ones that come up is Michael Jackson's Thriller was notoriously mixed on a set of Oritones. And it's one of those records that sounds great everywhere. And you can hear the low end even on small systems. And you can really like hum along to the baseline no matter where you are. And that's in large part because they were mixed on or had a lot of decisions made on a small set of speakers like one of these. On top, you see the Reftones, which are a much more modern version of this design. They are not an exact recreation of the Oritones, and they're not intended to be. And in just a little bit, I'll talk a little bit about their design philosophy and what makes them unique compared to other similar offerings out there. But first, I want to give you a sense for why this type of speaker design is so important and so useful to begin with. And what's unique about this style of speaker is that it's a single driver design. And the original Oritones actually didn't go that deep down or that high up. They were a little bit limited in how much low end they could put out, and they were a little bit limited in how much high end they could put out compared to modern speakers. But the great thing about this single driver design and the fact that this kind of speaker is a closed design, there's no porting, no holes on it anywhere, is that it will be remarkably free of resonances thanks to not having a port. So what low end did exist in the Oritones was really clean, really tight, really fast, really neutral. And one of the cool things about having a slightly band limited speaker is it made you really focus in on the mid range. Another great thing about this style of speaker design is the mid range that is there will usually have a really fast transient response. Again, because of this not having the porting, not having to deal with a really big speaker that has to move a lot of mass, you can get really precise transients and you can really hear what's going on in the attack of sound and allows you to make better decisions, I think, about things like compression and saturation and limiting. You can just hear a bit more detail and speed in the mid-range on a set of smaller monitors like these. The other thing I love about the single driver style of speaker design is that if you don't have or can't afford a three-way speaker, this is a great way to kind of approximate some of the type of results you'd get off of a three-way speaker without having to spend a ton of money on a three-way speaker design. For those of you who don't know what that means, the conventional studio monitors you're probably used to seeing will have like a woofer in the bottom and a tweeter on the top. That's a two-way speaker design. And in general, three-way speaker designs, they're going to have a woofer, a mid-range driver, and a tweeter are going to be a lot more expensive. Up until very recently, you'd usually find these maybe starting at a minimum of like $2,500 a pair, $3,000 a pair, and up. And it's only been very recently that you're finding some three-way speaker designs for the studio for $1,000 and less. The great thing about a three-way speaker design is that there's an inherent compromise with a two-way speaker design, the kind of speaker you may already have in your studio. When that big woofer, maybe it's five or six or eight or even 10 inches, really starts moving a lot of air, it starts to compromise in its ability to give you good mid-range detail. The more low end it starts putting out and the more level it starts putting out, the more the mids kind of get compressed, lose speed, lose transients, and take a little bit of a back seat. So if you don't want to have to go out and buy a three-way speaker design and you want to be able to keep the two ways that you already know and love, but get some more mid-range detail and mid-range focus for your mixes, adding an additional set of a single cube speaker can be huge just as an alternate check and an alternate reference. A lot of people say they use these speakers in such a way where they're just double checking things to make sure they still sound good on the little ones. But I got to tell you, there are some great mixers out there who actually spend a lot of time making a lot of critical listening decisions on speakers like these. They really force you to get your mid-range right. And getting the mid-range right leads to having a record that's right everywhere else. 
And if you listen to a record like Michael Jackson's Thriller, the low end on that record sounds great everywhere because it sounds great on a pair of sound cube or mixing cube style of speakers. I really can't oversell how useful these are. They have become one of the two sets of speakers that are probably among the most ubiquitous um, in studios of major mixers. The other ones obviously being the Yamaha NS10s. For the few of you who have never heard of those, they're a two-way speaker design. It also has a closed box like these, so they have good, fast transient response. But unlike the NS10s, I don't actually think the Oritones sound bad. They're actually really nice sounding speakers, in my opinion. They were just kind of really band limited. The Yamaha NS10s sound a little bit annoying, and they really push the mid-range forward, but it's almost like a cheat for mixing in that they lead you to making better decisions that are going to make your mix sound better elsewhere. For me, the Cube style of speaker design, like the Reftones or the Oritones, has the same result of steering you towards making a better mix, but without sounding annoying and actually sounding pretty beautiful. I was just listening to Thriller on this, and I was just listening to some Tame Impala and some Blonde Redhead, and I put on Uptown Funk, and I put on some hip hop, and well-mixed records sounded absolutely great on these speakers. They were fun to listen to. And this style of speaker is gonna sound significantly better than most boom boxes that most consumers have. And they're gonna give you the detail that you need to make critical listening decisions on, but without being so hyped up that you think your mix array sounds great so you don't actually mix. And again, one of the most useful things here is if you can get your records to sound good on these, particularly in the low end, you know they're going to translate to a variety of places. You may have said to yourself at some point in your life, I'm sure you've said to yourself at some point in your life that, man, I got that mix sounding great, but when I took it out to the car or this other place or wherever, it didn't sound good anymore. I don't think anyone has ever said, ever, man, I got the record sounding really great on the Oritones or on the Reftones, and then I took them somewhere else and it didn't sound great anymore. I, I just, in fact, that might be the very first time that that sentence has ever been said, like right now, <laughs> recorded. It's just not something that happens. Records that sound great on this type of speaker can sound great everywhere. Some people think that these speakers sound bad, and they did get a name in the 70s and 80s and 90s, the awful tones or the horror tones, they'd be nicknamed. But they really only sound bad when you play bad sounding mixes through them. Again, you play great sounding mixes through them, you, your, your jaw can just drop at how good a little set of speakers like these can sound. So the one problem with this type of speaker design is these original Oritones that I fell in love with a decade ago aren't made anymore. And they also aren't exactly made with today's music in mind necessarily. So the Reftones here are not an exact recreation of these Oritones, but they take a slightly different approach that I'll talk about in just a second. But when I first got into these speakers, some of the issues that I ran into in buying my own pair is, one, the price of them kept on seeming to go up because they weren't being made anymore. And as the secret got out more and more about how useful they were to a new generation of people, the price went up more and more and more. But shortly after I got into this style of speaker, a couple reissues started to be made, unofficial reissues by other companies that were meant to be much more inexpensive. And those things were useful. And was, they were a nice addition to the market, but they didn't sound like the original Oritones. And they weren't, in my opinion, quite as useful as the original Oritones. Years later, and just, just a few years back now, two additional speaker designs came to the market. One that was meant to more uh, recreate the originals, and one that took a slightly different approach, and that's the Reftones. And the Reftones are designed by a guy named Dave Hampton. I just talked to him on the phone recently to get a sense for what his design philosophy was going into these speakers. And I gotta say, just as an aside, it kind of blew me away talking to Dave. I got to get him on the podcast sometime. He used to work on like missile guidance systems, and then he worked on the Oberheim synthesizers, you know, some of the most uh, notorious synthesizers in history. And he's just a really brilliant guy with a great sense for the kind of the big picture. And that is what speakers like the Reftones or the original Oratones are great for, getting the big picture together. And his thing in the design for these is that he said, 
I don't want to make a just exact recreation of the oritones. I want to take the concept, the principle of, hey, a single driver cube speaker is still a useful thing to have in the studio. It's great for all of those reasons I just discussed of having really resonance free low end because of the non ported design of bringing the mid range in to focus of giving you a lot of mid range detail and really fast transient response relative to other speakers you may be able to afford to buy. So I want to take all of those things, but say, if we were going to make these speakers today, how would we make them differently? And a few things come to mind that, that are absolutely different about these compared to the original Oritones. So number one, they are made out of a solid piece of wood. I believe it's solid birch in here, where my original Oritones are made kind of out of a more particle board kind of thing. And they honestly are, to a degree, falling apart at the seams just a little bit. And that will happen to this kind of speaker over time. I really wouldn't feel comfortable traveling with these original Oritones, or God forbid, if they got wet, the particle board can really kind of soak up and, and swell up. And to be honest, I can hear the difference between these two Oritones. My two originals sound a little bit different. I got very close serial numbers to one another, but I can tell my left speaker sounds a little different than my right, and maybe the speaker's starting to fatigue a little bit more and has a little bit of distortion. And these are obviously made with much more modern tolerances where the sound quality is great right off the bat and they sound identical to each other. But with modern speaker design, he's also able to get these speakers to go significantly lower in bass and to extend further up. Where the original Oritones really were kind of more of a band limited speaker, where, you know, there's not a ton going on below 100 hertz, say, the ref tones can go down fairly deep, especially compared to something like the Oritones. And there's really useful information on these in the kind of bass range. And Dave's idea in designing these was that music today is significantly different than it was in the 1970s and 1980s. People have different expectations and consumer systems are higher fi than they were back then. So although it is absolutely great to have a single driver, solid box design, we want something that is greater bandwidth for today's music. And listening to these compared to the original Oritones is a bit of a different experience. They are not mimicking the original Oritone design by any stretch. I would say that there, again, is just really useful low-end extension where you can trust what you're hearing in the bottom end. So any of the low end here, again, is trustworthy low end. It just goes deeper than it does on the originals. There's also less of a pushed forward mid-range thing going on with the Reftones compared to the Oritones. If you want an exact mimic of the original Oritones, the Reftones aren't it, but that's potentially a good thing depending on what you want or need. If you really never got the idea of working on Oritones or you tried working on them, but you thought they sounded kind of awful like apparently some people do, then the Reftones are probably going to speak to you much more so. Or if you want a single set of monitors that you can rely on that you can take with you as a travel set of monitors, the Reftones would be absolutely great for that too. They have these travel kits even with the Reftones that you could look at where they'll come with a, a bag and a hard carrying case and a really small amp to power them. And you can kind of bring them anywhere and get really trustworthy, resonance-free monitoring anywhere that you go add them into any studio or remote location you may be on. I've heard of these being used, uh, TV studios, wheeling them from place to place, people doing audio production work predominantly on these or using them as a significant check for how things might translate onto a consumer system or onto a TV. So just the durability and the ability to travel with these, as well as the deeper extension in the low end and the higher extension on the top end. Listening to both of these was a lot of fun, and I think you could learn to mix really well on either set of these speakers. But if you don't like the idea of the Oritones really not having much significant low end extension and not telling you anything about what's going on down there, then the more modern design of the Reftone is just going to give you that additional bottom and additional top end that you might expect out of a more modern set of speakers. Of course, the Reftones aren't going to go 
quite as deep as a much larger speaker design. And in a way that's useful, they still have a little tiny bit of that uh, band limiting quality that the Oratones had in that they're not going to put out the most confusing low end frequencies, the stuff below, you know, 60 hertz and 50 hertz. And they're not filling your room up with a lot of that stuff, where in most smaller rooms, those lowest frequencies aren't going to be able to be reproduced well at all. In really small rooms, even if you put up a lot of acoustic treatment, those lowest frequencies can be extremely problematic and misleading. So they still have a bit of that quality that you get out of the original Oratones of removing some of the lowest, lowest frequencies that can confuse you in a lot of environments and instead just give you only useful base where you can trust what you're hearing and be reasonably certain that you can get your room into a place where all the frequencies being put out by this speaker are frequencies that you can trust. And one of the last great things about this style of speaker is you can get some of the best in class for not that much money. If you were just going to spend, you know, a few hundred, 400 bucks or something on a set of two-way powered studio monitors, you're not going to get the best ones out there. But if you spend a few hundred, 300, 400 bucks on a set of passive cube style closed speakers, you're going to get some of the best ones that can be made, that are the best of their class. So that's another great thing. If you have just a set of kind of middle of the road, larger studio monitors, you can get a set of some of the best possible cube monitors for very little money compared to trying to upgrade your main powered studio monitors to the next level. So that's something to think about too. Well, has this video been useful for you? Have you tried this type of speaker design for yourself? Have you compared the Reftones and the Oratones to each other? And if so, did you have similar impressions to the ones that I've shared here? Let me know about I want to hear from you. Type it into the comments below. I read every single one and I respond when I can. Thanks again for hanging out with me. This has been Justin Coletti of Sonic Scoop, brought to you by Reftone. Thank you, Reftone, for sending me these lovely sets of Reftone speakers and for letting me talk about one of my favorite speaker designs in history. In addition to this main flagship product, they also have a Yamaha NS10 woofer replacement coming that's supposed to follow a similar design approach where it's meant to be kind of a higher performance, more modern replacement for the NS10 woofer that should probably not blow out as quite as often as the original NS10 woofers did. They also have a in-ear monitor coming that I'm really interested to check out when those are available. It's supposed to be also of kind of reference quality. I'll put a link in the description where you can check out more from these guys if you are interested. If you're looking to add a speaker design like this to your studio, then Reftone is definitely one of those brands to check out. I really enjoyed listening to them. Slightly different flavor than the more vintage and band limited or tones, but super useful and wonderful sounding in their own right. Really great additional reference, whether you're using it just as a check or to do a lot of long-term mixing on. Either way, I think getting this style of speaker into your studio is going to be super useful for you. Thanks for hanging out with me. This has been Justin Coletti of Sonic Scoop. See you next time.